greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Karen Dunham. I serve the Lord in the throne of grace at Living Bread International Church. I want to say, wow, we're coming out of the wilderness. We're coming out of the ash heap. He said, I'll give you beauty for ashes. He is opening up, roll open you ancient gates. The King of Glory is coming through. And the amazing thing about God, when he rescues you, he carries you with him. And so, wow, we're not where we were yesterday. We're one day closer to the glory of God. He is good. We are no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves to Satan because 2,000 years ago, for God so loved the, the world, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. His only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Jewish Messiah, God in the flesh, Lamb of God, Holy One of Israel, Ancient of Days. He is the living God. And when you believe in him, when you put your trust in him, wow, wow, wow. An amazing adventure begins when you say yes to Jesus Christ. People say to me, how do you come in? How do you get out of the darkness and come into the light? Well, I tell you, you say, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Sprinkle me with the blood, with your shed blood that you shed at Calvary 2,000 years ago when you gave your life for me. He paid my ransom and he paid my debt that I can say, forgive me my sins, wash me in your blood, and he takes me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's what it looks like, the road to salvation. He's open for everybody. Give your lives to Jesus and be a soldier and run the race with us. And that's where we are today, talking about the race. And Lord, what do you have to say to us this morning? Come from the four winds, O breath of God, and be released on the dry bones. And the Lord is saying in 2 Timothy 2, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. These things which you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Suffer hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one that enlisted him as a soldier. So what he's saying, the Lord is saying, I've enlisted you as one of my soldiers. Don't get all entangled with this everyday life, with the things of this world. He's saying, don't get wrapped up in that stuff. Don't get entangled. I know people that get entangled for years in lawsuits and run from those things. Don't get entangled with the things of the world. And it says, because we have to keep our eye on the general the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it says, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to be the first to receive his share of the crop. Consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. And sure enough, if you get into a race and you're gonna run a marathon or you're gonna get into some kind of race and you go out and break all the rules, you're not gonna win any kind of prize. So you've been enlisted as a soldier, you gotta run according to what the Lord has hedged you in to do. And how do we find out how to run the race all the way the endless life? Through the word of God. This is where our answer is found. This is where all our answers are found. And it goes on to say, remember, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descended of David, according to my gospel, which I suffer hardship even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not imprisoned. For this reason, I endure all things for the sake of those that are chosen, that they may obtain salvation. 
which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. So Paul was saying, oh, I'm suffering. I'm having these hardships, but it's all for the others out there. And it says here, if we died with him, we'll live with him in verse 12. If we endure, we'll reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we're faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. And Paul goes on, you know, this is what it looks like to be an unashamed workman. Remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God, not to wrangle about words, which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. And he's saying, don't argue, don't wrangle about words. If someone says, well, it's blue and you thought it was green, so what? So what? You know, there's so many things that we don't have to argue about or be in dispute about. The simplicity of the gospel, the blood of Jesus, being driven by the power of the Holy Spirit on our way to the arms of the Father. No other way to get there but through Jesus Christ. And these words of instruction that he gave us, love our neighbor, love our, you know, bless our enemies, bless those that curse and revile you. And then he says, this way you'll become approved to God as a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed because you're accurately handling the word of truth. It says, avoid empty chatter, it says, because the talk will spread like gangrene. And this is what I want to talk about. I mean, I want to tell you something. When somebody starts walking off the pathway and they begin talking, clamorous ch chatter, stirring up strife and making trouble, speaking lies, speaking, you know, and some of it might be miscommunication, because, you know, in the Middle East, we have so many languages. We got the Arabic language, the Jewish language. We got Chinese, we got American, we got Korean. We have a lot of languages in and through our ministry, many of them. And so sometimes there can be miscommunication. You can insult the other culture, many, many things. But what God says to do, don't, don't speak empty chatter. Um, don't, don't spread strife because he said it's like gangrene and it'll just ruin the, it'll ruin the people listening. So I want to pray right now and I want to ask the Lord because Satan is raging, 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 and is trying to throw hell and hellfires on many of God's people. And they talk and they talk and they talk. And the Bible says they're releasing gangrene everywhere. First of all, Lord, all of us, you out there that are listening, we want to pray for our enemies. God bless those that curse and revile us. Father, don't hold the sin against them those that are spreading gangrene, those that are just pouring out, those that are, are speaking lies. Father, forgive them for what they're doing. Forgive them, Father. Lord, we ask peace, 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 peace be released. And Lord, let the life-giving spirit of Jesus Christ fall on those sitting in darkness, pouring out the gangrene and bring them in for salvation, God. Lord, you can do it and forgive us, God. Forgive us for listening and, and, and even getting involved in things that bring strife. We say shields up and we're gonna stay steady as your workmanship, God. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, we can do it, God, all the way to the endless life. Lord, come from the four winds, O breath of God, and blow us on that narrow path. Don't let us go to the left or right. Narrow path all the way to the endless life. We are not going to turn back in the name of Jesus. A big God bless you.